How is it going, my lovely cardinal sinners? You're looking remarkably sinful today. Is it that time already where we sit down and laugh at the sillier, messier, and well, more broken side of you give five Ds? You bet your sweet ass it is. Last time we watched as Shiro, the sexy, mysterious duelist, faced off against Yusei Fudo. Except it wasn't Shiro at all, and he wasn't even that sexy. I know, a criminal. Really, it was Hunter Pace who disguised himself for all of two minutes to take on Yusei Fudo in an attempt to get closer to Jack Atlas. I mean, can you really blame the guy? It, it, it's Jack Atlas, and I would do many terrible things to get close to that man. So very many terrible things. <clears throat> we watched as Yusei did the opposite of going fast to feel alive, and he beat Hunter in a duel to continue his Fortune Cup journey, as he also attempts to get closer to our beloved Jack Atlas. It seems I have a large amount of competition for this role. This time, we're going to... Oh... God, please anything but this place. Also known as the Spirit Realm. You know, that world Yu-Gi-Oh occasionally acknowledges and it's just kind of where dual spirits live and it's all nice and pleasant, except it isn't. And instead it's, um, whatever this is. Honestly, get ready to be uncomfortable because episode 18 and 19 of Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds are certainly, yeah, they're certainly something. Yeah, I might want to have Chris Hansen on speed dial these episodes because, well, look, sit down, have a cup of tea, I'm about to be real with y'all. I regret to inform you that this is a Luna duel. I know, I know, I know. Calm down, calm down. It's okay, it's okay. Luna duels this weirdo who's gonna make you feel really uncomfortable basically the entire duel, all while ancient fairy dragon is, well, dodgy as all hell. That's right, we get to watch as a dragon gaslights, grooms, and tries to convince a child to protect the spirit realm. But we can't watch these episodes alone because that would be torture. So this is a very special episode of How Broken is 5Ds because for the first time ever, we have a guest. Golden Nova's gonna be joining us and we filmed this video live on stream. Oh yeah, baby, we getting wild up in here. So sit back, relax, and let's look at How Broken is Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds episode 18, Return to the Spirit World, part one, also known in Japan as Deep Breath Doom, Deep Breath Like Persona taught you. The Ancient Forest, Invitation to the Spirit World. God, Japanese names for animes are wild. All right, roll the show. Professor, hello, it's me, Lazar. I know you're in here. We need your help with the next duel. What professor do you have that sits in a fucking room like this? Well, ever since we cut the staffing bills for Duel Academy, we've had to make do with the dungeons. I'm very suspicious of this professor. Why is he in a fucking... Is he in prison? That looks like prison. I feel like he's in prison. I don't trust this man. You can't teach kids how to fusion summon anymore because of woke. That's why they put him in the dungeon. You ever think about redecorating? Maybe some track lighting? The darkness helps. <laughs> Lazar is just like, hey, did you ever think about having, I don't know, fucking lighting in your room? And he's like, no, the darkness helps. <laughs> okay, dude. With my preparation. And as a faithful servant of Iliaster, I know the darkness can only be illuminated by the dragon star. Okay, that explained everything. <laughs> it's just a fucking cult is. This guy is like, fuck this, darkness is really good. I know that I can only be good with Iliaster if I have dragons fucking clashing with each other. How may I be of service? I'm so glad that you asked. Director Goodwin needs your hypnotic powers to tap into the mind of a possible signer. All right, but do you want to just close the signer as a child, Lazar? <laughs> At what point would you like to disclose to this man that you need him to hypnotize a child? God, this is so creepy. So fucking creepy. He thanks you for throwing your first duel to end up in the loser's bracket, but now he needs you to perform. When was there a loser's bracket? At what point prior to now have we ever been told that to this tournament. What are the tournament rules? Last episode, it was like, oh, you can just do whatever the fuck you want. It's fine. And, and now it's just like, they literally, literally this episode have just mentioned it. At no point did they ever mention it prior to now. I, I'm with chat. I think someone who was not meant to lose lost. And they're like, oh, we didn't fucking find out they were assigned. They're just, they're making this shit up out their ass. That's what they're doing. They're making this shit up. You say beat Hunter. Yeah. Look 
looks like he's moving on to the semifinals. We established that last episode. Oh man, I wish I could be down there and duel him. He's good, but you say learned his best moves from yours truly. Fuck right off with that one. I taught him to change his junk synchron to defense position so we could roll some dice to do absolutely nothing. <laughs> oh, and where were those moves when you lost in the first round? So you're not gonna deny that it's incorrect? Like, that that's not true? It's just a lie? You're gonna be like, oh, yeah, yeah, you did teach you say everything he knows, but you apparently forgot how to use any of it? Wait, I was playing as you, which means that you lost. Huh? As far as the millions of people watching, I didn't lose a thing. Don't worry, it doesn't matter that I looked like a piece of trash in front of millions of people, because I was pretending to be you, so it's okay. Don't head for the exits just yet. Or ex Goodwin, our master of ceremonies, has set up a loser's bracket for the first round. That means if you lost, grab your deck because you might get a second chance to duel again. What do you mean you might? Yeah, do you have a loser's bracket or don't you? Oh, right! My fortune cup's not over yet! Um, technically... Save your technically for the blog's decks. No! You okay, don't get to use a technicality two seconds ago, Leo! So that when someone uses a technicality on you, you're like, no, you can't use a technicality on me, that's not acceptable. Nuh-uh! A technicality only works when it's a technicality for me! Yeah, Leo, you can't do that. That's very childish of you. Uh, what are you up to, Goodwin? You're not the type who gives second chances unless you're going to get something out of it. How do you know? You had barely any interactions with Rex Goodwin, you say. To be fair, he did threaten Yusei's friends. He did. He was all like, remember those people you've already forgotten? I'll fuck them up. And Yusei's like, oh, I already did that by forgetting they existed. Now just you watch. I'm going to win for certain this time, Luna. Ha ha ha. Um, I need your hair braids, uh, though, okay? Get your own. Come on, Luna! Uh huh? I think he does have his own hair braids, by the way. By the fact his hair's in a ponytail, he does, in fact, have one hair tie to work with. Yeah, do you, did you not bring, like, a spare? <laughs> Come on, man. You gotta have that one spare scrunchie in case you need to pretend to be your sister in a big important duel, you know? Now, take your seats. We're about to give two of these duelists another opportunity. First, we drew two very lucky players. And I assure you, it was random, okay? Why the fuck it wasn't? No, it wasn't! You're lying! All right, everyone. We've got these duelists here. And don't worry, we haven't stacked their deck. We put these four duelists into a pod and and we drew out two duelists. By the way, we didn't make this clear when we made the initial announcement because we are just throwing the fucking rules out as we go. So yeah, these two totally random duelists, totally random. Don't worry about the fact that it's already showing the bracket on screen. It's totally random. I'm about to draw them. Totally random. And first up is... Everyone's favorite green-haired girl. She's fast, she's feisty, and she has to be home before her bedtime. <laughs> we have a minor into this giant tournament in front of millions of people. Oh my god, that would be so embarrassing. Like, you're being announced for, like, a big stream, and I'm like, and next up, we've got Golden Nova. He's cool. He knows Yu-Gi-Oh lore. He needs to be in bed by nine because he's been a naughty, naughty boy, and mommy isn't happy. I used my credit card for more branded. He didn't even pull names out of a hat or anything. He just announced. He just said the people he wanted. Oh, don't worry. We already did the draws. Backstage where no one could see it. Trust me, they were random. <laughs> Generation of dueling superstars, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Miss Luna! Get fucked, they remember your trick from last time. You also don't look like her right now. You clearly look like her twin brother. He wasn't even dressed up. And he's like, yeah, they, they think it's me. They'll, they'll point the spotlight to me. Also, damn, that spotlight guy picked her out of a crowd of like a million people. Luna's dueling? I'm guessing they finally got the right kid for the match, huh? You guys are acting surprised that Luna is being forced to duel. When Luna was supposed to be dueling this entire time. Oh, by the end of the duel we had, I didn't think the boy was half bad. Now I can't wait to see what his sister's got. Hold up. I'm oh, sorry. Did we watch that. different duels? Because Leo played like ass. I can't duel? Can't duel, but Luna, it was your name on that invitation. You belong here. But I'm her. She can't go out there and duel. What is happening? I can't go out there and duel, but Luna, you accepted the invitation. You knew you had to duel. But I'm Luna. No, you're Leo. Yeah, but have you considered 
I want a duel! I want, I want, I want a! This is the most children fighting situation ever, and I am not a parent because I don't want to deal with shit like this. The greatest birth control ever conceived was the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. Yeah, thank you, Yu-Gi-Oh! for making me celibate because no one wants to bang a Yu-Gi-Oh! nerd who watches 5Ds and thirsts over Jack Atlas the way I do. No one wants that. Uh, okay, I was focusing in on the annoying children angle. I think uh, that other stuff is all a bunch of self-reporting. <laughs> now that my friend and colleague has outed herself in front of the audience, let's get back to this show. I'm afraid that the jig is up, young man. The crowd wants your sister. The jig was always up. Everyone knew. <laughs> everyone, everyone knew. Literally everybody knew that this was incorrect. Also, old man phrasing, you can't just say, the crowd want your sister, Leo. That's so sus. That's wild. That's, that's a very dangerous sentence. And not, as the adults looking after these two children, you and Tanner should probably be a little concerned about that. Not being like, oh yeah, the crowd wants your sister. That's fine. You guys don't understand. Something strange happens to me whenever I duel. Place your bets, everybody, based off the name of the episode. What happens to Luna when she duels? Does she A, get excited and feel alive like the rest of us duelists? <laughs> Does she B, suffer traumatic experiences with spirit monsters? Or C, she forgets that she's Luna and thinks she's Leo? Oh, not again! Are you gonna start that stuff about duel spirits? You're getting a little too old to play make-believe. Fuck you, Leo. That's all you do. You just said yeah, you're taught you say everything he knows. And you're like, no, you can't play make-believe. He's so double standards. Yeah, you're living the biggest fantasy of all. That Morphtronics are good. It's funnier to me because Morphtronics is just basically like kids' toys. And he's like, you gotta grow up. You gotta be an adult. Our parents are never home. You gotta grow up. It's not make-believe. And if the only way to prove it is by going out there, huh? well, then I guess I'll have to go out there and duel. Okay, but if you win, I get to be you for the next round. Wow, thanks for your support. Bro, what just happened? She's like, oh, yeah, you know, all right, you won't believe me that I talk to fucking spirits, even though that's pretty normal in the Yu-Gi-Oh realm. Happened in DM, because Yami is a spirit, but Korra is a spirit, you know? It happened in DM, happened in GX, we had the winged Kariba, we had like Ruby Carbuncle, but no, no, Leo, you don't believe in dual spirits, even though this is the same universe and timeline, you don't believe that dual spirits, you watched a black rose come to life like two episodes ago, and you still don't believe dual spirits are real. Good luck, Luna! Now, Leo, what's this about your sister hearing dual spirits? <laughs> Fucking Jesus. Okay, old man. It's like, all right, good luck, Luna. Have fun, sweetie. Immediately as soon as she's gone. Right, so your sister's fucking batshit crazy, yeah? Tell me more about that. All right, now she's out of earshot, can we talk about the incredibly zany things that she's talking about? All right, now spill the tea about your sister. How crazy is she, Leo? She always does this. We'll be dueling, and then she's all like this. I feel funny. Hear that? It's dual spirits. She's just afraid I'll beat her. <laughs> I go into attack with my radion for game, and she's all like, "No, Leo, I think I'm, I think I'm having a serious medical problem." Please call 911. She's just yelling about stuff. She's afraid of losing. <laughs> I hate Leo so much. Leo is so awful. I've seen some weird stuff. And oh come on! If that were true, then well, I don't know, but Luna'd be a whole lot more important than she is. <laughs> If any of that were true, then that means that I could have prevented thousands of dollars in hospital debt. That can't be right. If any of that was true, she would be more important than she is. Oh my god. That's so mean. Leo is just fucking roasting his sister. <laughs> the episode, the roast of Luna. Jesus. If she had that kind of thing going on, she would be the pro tag, not me, and that's not acceptable. So, wow. So tell me why you think she's a sign of Goodwin. Well, for starters, the detector picked her out of the crowd. Trust me, she's a lot more important than anyone knows. Can we all stop dicking? I'm glad Jack Atlas is here to make the situation better. Once she duels the professor, then we'll know without a doubt. Let's see if Zigzix is ready to monitor her. Um. 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 
I'm uh, I don't like how the adults are talking about abusing this small child. Look, we live in a surveillance state now. If I wasn't monitoring small children, that would be the weird part. Look, Z I'm sure Zigzig has a valid defense for why he wants to abuse this child for science. Oh, Director! Zigzig's reporting for duty, sir! Just look at this! If the needle exceeds this yellow section, there's no doubt our little Luna is a signer! Did you see how no energy was there? Surely the signers give off a little bit of signer energy when they're in the vicinity. That's all. Also, I thought he was going to be like, look, if it gets to the top of that blue section, it's going to be really cool and important and prove they're a signer. No, it needs to li literally explode to prove it. He's already got them in the same vicinity, but he still hasn't confirmed that they're signers yet. He's literally seen you say signer mark and Jack signer mark and Akiza's signer mark. So he's got pretty good confirmation, but he needs more. Yeah, I've had enough. I, I've had enough of Zig Zig's crotch profile on my screen. And more signers mean more energy. More energy means more energy and then we'll have enough to <laughs> i want to yeah. i would do that too i would absolutely just fucking hang up the call and be like yeah i understand more signers means more signer energy more signer energy means more zig zig spin i get it i get it he really needs to get out more fucking jesus i think the problem is that he cannot be out more he has the restraining order from the entire city all right rex what what you gonna tell jack because i'm sure jack's gonna understand by the way because jack atlas would never be confused by information you're giving him never in a million years now there's another reason that we've been studying this little girl eight years ago she was admitted to a special hospital saying that she could hear dual spirit voices that's weird they admitted her being like you're insane why do you have special hospitals for people who specifically say they can hear dual spirits? That's a really specific thing to have a hospital for. All right, Jack, take a look at this information. I can't read Latin. <laughs> What's worse is he's now going to talk like he understood any of that Latin. This dude can barely read at any level. And Jack Atlas, the himbo of the dub, is about to probably say something smart. And that's so fucking painful. What do you got for me, Jack? So she has quite the imagination. But she's, he's just like she's insane. That's his take. Jack Atlas's fucking take from all this information that he absolutely can't understand because it's in Latin was, well, she's fucking insane. Jack, she was a dueling prodigy and beating our greatest professionals at the age of three. These two different logo, these two different image blocks, same test. Oh, it's yeah. I want to know how they got these pictures, especially the one on the bottom right. Who the fuck, while this little girl is collapsed on the floor and everyone's like crowding around her panic, took a fucking photo? Then one day, she suddenly collapsed during a duel and fell into a coma. No one knows why, not even the best doctors. In fact, there was only one person who believed that she'd wake up again, and that was her twin brother, Leo. I don't believe you for a fucking second that that was true. And then, for no apparent reason, she woke up healthy a month later. That's a great movie of the week, Goodwin, but who cares? <laughs> Damn, fucking man. Jesus Christ, Jack. Look, I need to get out of this conversation as quickly as possible <laughs> before Goodwin figures out I can't read Latin. <laughs> I know. I'll be really mean to this little girl. <laughs> oh no, Jack didn't understand anything. He's just like, this, he's this man's just shoving Latin in my face. She said that she wasn't asleep. She said she spent that entire month in the dual monster's spirit world. And I'm a blue eyes white dragon. Come on. Incredible. Absolutely <laughs> incredible response, dude. Uh, Jack, this is why you're the best. <laughs> oh my God. The girl said she was in a coma, but she wasn't really. She was living in the spirit world with Yu-Gi-Oh monsters for a month and somehow didn't die. That's great. Uh, I'm a blue eyes white dragon. That's, Jack's just like, this is fucking bullshit. That's so funny. I'm sorry. Now, funny, but we have reason to believe she told the truth. For instance, she knew of the ancient dragon star legend. Wait, okay. So because she woke up and said stuff that you knew, you were like, it must be true. She's a cultist at heart, guys. I know it. Back. She knew some things that even we did not. Vital clues to unlocking the mystery of the people of the stars. And more. Like the incredible power of the ancient Crimson Dragon. Hmm. 
Jack understood none of that. Not one word you just said went into Jack's skull. Not one. She also gave us a point-by-point -point overview of the plot of the My Little Pony animated show several years before it came out. But a few days after waking, her memory began to fade like it was a dream. And now she remembers nothing of the spirit world. Leaving us one choice to make her duel and go back to that world. No! That's not your one choice, Rex Goodwin. You have more choices and options. You could A, let the girl forget the traumatic 30 days she spent in the Yu-Gi-Oh! spirit realm. Well, yes, I suppose we could do the ethical thing, but you might be forgetting something, Doom. I'm a billionaire. I don't care about people's feelings. I like it. It's like, yeah, she just woke up and then she said, Jack Atlas sounds a lot like this man called Bakora. Chris Hansen is waiting in the next room for Rex and Lazar. We have reason to believe that you've been Googling this small child far too many times, Rex. Only then will we learn if she is a signer. And with her help, we can unleash the Crimson Dragon so that we can save our troubled world. Okay, well this shot's fucking suspicious. Hello FBI, yes I can hold. <laughs> Chris Hansen has taken a step towards you my friend. He's taken quite a few steps. I think Jack's hmm was him being like, do I phone him now? Now entering the arena, the little duelist who could, the pint-sized prodigy, Luna! Okay Luna, nothing to worry about. Just the biggest duel of your life on national television. Huh. I wonder if Yusei's watching. Why would he not be like? Firstly, why does she look happy? Like, yay! I could fall into a coma and I'm about to do it in front of everyone in the world. That's good. I hope Yusei's watching me. He's gonna say something cool. It's Yusei. He always says something cool. Cool. Good job, Lynn. <laughs> Thanks, Yusei. And now, her opponent, the dean of the deck, the brain of the game, the professor! He's got a PhD in psychology, hypnology, and duelology, so Luna better look out! What the fuck is duelology? Well, they teach at Duel Academy. What? No, what is duelology? What is it? The psychology the of, of dueling? dueling? The art of dueling? Pleased to meet you, dear Luna. Um, hi. I've heard many things about you. I'm sure this duel will be quite illuminating for the both of us, don't you think? Doubt it. What? Well, she just thinks she's gonna have a duel, dude. You seem to be like, I'm about to fucking brainwash you. Huh? Karibon, why don't you ever talk when Leo's around? Because I don't fucking like him. <laughs> That's okay, why! Yeah. Do you know what? I'm starting to think the insult guy might not be the worst person in the tournament. A guy psychologically torturing a child? That might be worse. That might actually... Remember, only the winner advances. The loser is out for good. Let's do You know, the rules for most tournaments. Well, like, my question is, winner ad advances to what? You guys haven't established a bracket or anything. You just picked two losers to duel. What do they advance to? Like the blooming lotus, you may go first. Sure, fine. I draw! I would, what does that mean? I... I would personally be conf I would be scared if I was a child and a man's like, yes, like a blooming lotus you are. I'd be like, mommy, I need an adult. And I summon Sunny Pixie in defense mode. Oh, fairy, that's adorable. Keep it up, Luna. Your turn, Professor. I'm sorry, but that was a, that that was a shit play. <laughs> All right, I've summoned one defense monster. Past turn. I feel like we need to counteract the negativity towards Luna. Keep it up, Luna. You summoned a pixie. You're, you're so good at this game. I summon a unique monster known as Symmetry Rorschach. That card won't let me focus. What? Why? Wow. But I don't understand why. Why does this one funky, wonky, fucky, wucky card mean you just like, I can't focus. You're not focusing hard anyway. You summoned a normal monster and past turn. Luna, think of my Rorschach as if it were a puddle of rain or a drop of ink in a lake. Look at it and tell me what you see. I see Jack Atlas and he's vaguely dressed. Am I seeing the right things or am I just tripping? Tell me if it reminds you of anything. Jack Atlas. Chat says Jack Atlas bent over. That's also a good image. Jack bending over. Is that correct, good sir? Look into your fears your dreams, even memories lost long ago. 
What do you see when you gaze into the abyss? Jack Atlas bent over in a satisfying way. What are you getting about this? A friend, perhaps? Your family? Or maybe a far-off place dimming like the candle of time? I... I see... Yes, tell me, Luna. What, what do, you do you see? Guys, I'm really uncomfortable with this door. This is, like... Oh. This would have been weird against a uh, regular opponent. <laughs> this is uh this is the to catch a predator version of Yu-Gi-Oh. This is what we're watching right now. I don't know. Look close. Look deep into the trading card, small child. Look deep into the trading card and remember that time you had a traumatic experience in the spirit realm. Thank you. Close. Close. What do you see? This episode is literally, you start with a Chris Hansen Tonbury, like, you know, like a Tonbury that's slowly walking towards you, but it's got Chris Hansen's face on it. And I don't know how far along the path it's going to get by the end of this fucking episode. I wish that Chris Hansen was the Tonbury, because that means eventually we'd have some resolution of this. <laughs> Professor, this door is being broadcast live. We need you to complete your fucking turn. It's a crystal skull, I think! Hey, Moth. This professor's a few cards short of a dual deck. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to be called that. I want that said to me. That's great. I need more of it. You're a few cards short of a dual deck, Doom. <gasps> That's such a... I, who came up with that insult? That's great. That's amazing. I'm sorry. Red motorcycles, that's good. Professor, we feel, in fact, we need to remind you that this is a live duel and we do, in fact, have a time limit rule. Please end your turn or surrender. What's he doing to Luna? Look close, Luna. Close. <sighs> Look closely. What do you see, Luna? I see... I see another tier zero format. <laughs> There's <laughs> just fucking snake eyes Take looking back away. at you. It's the most terrible thing I've ever seen in my life. Huh, a fairy? spirit realm was slightly traumatic that this this seems to be validating that theory what do you see ah! what is happening that's the creature doing the at all in a server it's very loud like the caterpillar who secludes itself in darkness before becoming a butterfly you must face your fears do you know how this guy was kept in a dark prison cell <laughs> i love darkness no one can see what's going on in there you can get away with almost anything in the dark. You I know. think we kept him there for our own safety. <laughs> and he, he well, didn't I mean, declare. Probably... Oh yeah, he didn't even declare an attack. I did, did he even attack? Or was that a special effect? I don't know what happened there. Yeah, the psychologically attack your opponent phase is missing from the paper game of Yu-Gi-Oh! But it does play a large part in the anime version, so... You must face your memories and live through them again. Do not be scared. But I'm afraid. You must be brave enough to relive what happened many years ago. I really like that he's like, you must not be afraid. And she's like, but I'm fucking terrified. Did you see what the fairy just did? You know, I'm starting to think that this guy isn't actually a very good counselor. <laughs> I would like to see his credentials, honestly. <laughs> yeah, uh, we get like a little diploma from the professor. Uh, he graduated magna cum laude and then jack gets a hold of it and goes they're doing what with the laude i know you have great power dear luna i know that you hear the dual spirits the others may not believe you but i do i'll help you return to that place the dual monster spirit world remember the chris hansen tom Bree that's tootling towards this man just taking another step yes it was all real and not some figment of your imagination luna i'm I'm starting to remember, Professor. I know you are. But, but for, for our, our next step, step you, need you need to trust me, Luna. Can you do that? I need... I need you to want to return to the dual spirit world. I need your promise, Luna. I fucking hate this dude. Come on. It's, this is so fucked. Nova, no, I don't... I don't wanna. I don't wanna watch this. Of course you don't get to choose to stop it right now. We, You wrote me in on this one. We've got two episodes. You gotta find the strength within yourself to watch this little child get psychologically abused by an unlicensed professional. I promise, Professor. Take me back. No, Luna! 
Uh-oh. No! Luna, you sound like a desperate ex. Stop it. You don't need to do this. Now I need you to think back to that scary time when you were in your coma. Try to remember. <sighs> well, like, look at the crowd. Look at that crowd that's just watercolor artwork. And she's like looking like, I know where Leo is. I tried before, but I can't. There's nothing I remember from it. Oh. Luna! Luna! Wake Luna! up! Oh. I'd be traumatized too if I had to Leo screaming at me like that. I'll be honest. <laughs> I'd have a little bit of PTSD from that, I'll be real. Wake the fuck up! Come on, bro! I was about to beat you, I totally won that duel! I'm remembering. Oh. Leo, you look sick. Helpful, Dexter, helpful. You know, when you're not feeling well, and whatnot. What really helps is your friend just going, Hey, no, but you look sick, bro. I'm worried about Luna, Dex. What's he doing? Well, you see, you see, small child, what he's doing is uh, not acceptable. Get an adult. Actually, you have two adults with you, and they are not helping you in any way, shape, or form in this scenario where you should absolutely get helped. I place two cards face down. It's your turn. Don't be scared, Luna. Is this the face of a duelist who's excited to be dueling? No, it's the face of a duelist who woke up at 3 a.m. in the morning to make a three-hour drive to a regionals. The child's exhausted. And I summon out Karibon. Karibon is a level one light attribute fairy type monster with 300 attack points and 200 defense points. You know, I say this every time. Thank you, Rush, little machine woman. Thank you. Thank you for giving me no helpful information. Does it have an effect? Does this card have any form of effect? Or are you just just going to tell me the, the attack and the... Yep. Like the Northern Star, this light illuminates the path inside of you. Now send the top five cards on your deck to the graveyard. Then reveal the sixth card, adding it to your hand. And you must play that card card as certain as the path of light itself or suffer 2,000 points of damage. Look, Luna, just take the 2,000 burn damage. Do not summon the card that this man is doing after milling you out. Why, Why don't, don't we begin? begin? Listen, Listen to, to my, my voice, voice as, as I, I count, count them all. And one. one. Perfect. Perfect. Two. two. Bro, I can't take the slow milling. Come on, bro, just... Why is it so slow? I I want to see the professor playing in Tier Limits format. I'm going to send Kid Kalos to the graveyard to summon Merlin. This will let me mill eight cards. I'm going to name them off one by one. One. Perfect. Two. Agido. Three. And six. Wonderful. Now show me. What's, What's the, the card, card you're, you're holding, holding in your hand? Ah, as I had hoped. The field spell, Ancient Forest. You will use it. Bro, she's already used it. Why are you telling her she's got to use it? She's already put it in the fucking zone. Uh, that's generally what men have to do. They already, they have to tell people things they're already doing to make it seem like they, it was their idea. This forest is quite a special place. All monsters are switched to attack mode and neither of us can summon or switch a monster to defense. Even if you were to attack, your monster would be destroyed once the battle was over. Okay, I hate when people do this. Like, this isn't even about the episode. This is Luna's card. Why are you explaining this nonsense? But I would be really pissed off if I was dueling and they're like, ah, yes, you're playing Fright Fur Patchwork. You're going to add an Edge Imp and a Polymerization to your hand. I'd be like, oh, I had no idea. Oh, that's what that does? Oh, no, this man knows her deck profile, guys. He knows it. <laughs> he watches her YouTube profile. He watches her YouTube. He's, he's invested. He's her only subscriber, but he's super invested. Chat, you're getting an innate need to press the subscribe or follow button dependent on where you watch. Watch this. You're going to press the follow button if it's not already lit up, or the subscribe button if it's not already subscribed. You're going to do that, chat, and you're going to appreciate it. Meanwhile, I'm going to explain to you what your cards do to you. Fighting forbidden. Secrets revealed. Why, it's just like the spirit world. Take, Take us, us there, there now. We, we have, have work, work to do. Stop saying creepy things to the small child! <laughs> Oh! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> the fuck what? is that fairy doing to her? <laughs> What's going on? What? what is happening? Wow, your cheekbones are really defined. Do we... Do we need to call Chris Hansen on the fairy? So here's a life lesson. Don't dual abuse children. It's bad. It will look at you. We will angry shake our heads at you. We'll be like... Well, you don't, uh, you don't want that. I'm concerned it took this long to learn the lesson, but better late than never. Oh. Kribon? Oh, where is this place? It looks so familiar, but I can't remember. Luna, he just explained this card in excruciating detail. I sense that this is a safe place, but something feels wrong. So this is how it looks to the people watching the door probe, eh? <laughs> She's just fucking zombified stood there. Like, pretty fucking traumatic, actually. Yeah, um... Hi, event coordinators, tournament organizers, judges, can we get, like, <laughs> some kind of intervention here? Rex, what do you think about this? You're waiting for my approval. Well, then... <sighs> Thanks, Rex. Good as always. Luna has finally traveled to the spirit world. Now I will truly test her signer powers. <laughs> ah, step number like 78. Jesus Christ, man. Step, there's just so many steps. And I'll be activating my face down gestalt trap. And this particular trap card will equip on your little Kariba. Um, there, he's got Nova. He's got like a handcuff trap type thing. Nova. Uh, it, it is the bad touch card. I, I will not argue this. <laughs> Oh no. Oh, this is awful. This is so fucking tech. Jesus Christ. Okay. Let's see how Luna deals with this. She does she's hypnotized! She's not doing shit, bro! She's hit she'll do whatever you tell her! Not only are Karibon's abilities cancelled, but all his points, both attack and defense, go to zero, zero dear, dear Luna. Luna. Wait, like, ah, oh, it, now it's shackled in the actual world. This, it's just shackling. This is fucked up. This is, this is messed up. This is unacceptable. I don't think this should be happening. Oh, Kribon, what just happened? The trees aren't deaf, but they are mute to your crying, please. Fucking great, thanks, trees. Great. Fucking, thank you. So. So great of you. <laughs> He's just arraying to himself. The, He's just... the trees don't have mouths, but they do have ears. No, they, they listen to you, but they don't say shit. I equip immortal homeostasis on Karibon. Leave the fucking Karibon alone. Why yeah, are you just bring... torturing it? And don't bring Maha Vilo into this. They're a completely innocent actor. <laughs> they just like equip cards. Why are you doing this? Now he cannot be destroyed in battle. But sadly, his fate is worse. For now, he serves as the architect of your loss. His original attack points have been altered. And until they can finally be restored, you suffer. <laughs> oh, okay. He's just blunt about it now. He's like, I have taken away your 300 attack. I have made it have no special abilities. I have made it unable to be destroyed by battle. It will fuck you up. You're welcome. <laughs> Not only have I stripped your card of all of its abilities, I've also made it impossible to die. It'll have to live with its state forever, <laughs> in eternal pain. This will make you better, Luna! 300 points around, much like the ill-tempered dog who bites your hand, whether you bring food or fowl. What dogs are you interacting with? Next I sacrifice, Symmetry Rorschach. And with that removed, I can summon Edo, the supreme magical force. Folks, say it with me. It's branded time! <laughs> Whenever the monster card Edo, the supreme magical force, is destroyed, it is resummoned to your field at the end of the turn. Guys, guys, the robot said useful shit. She actually said it's effect this time. Useful shit. Give her a point. She never does that. Don't worry! Huh? Luna, I know you said don't worry, but I'm looking at this and I'm feeling a little bit worried. Even though Ito will be destroyed if I attack with him, he still returns to my field at the end of every turn. Of course with him summoned, though. 
No other monsters will be allowed on my field. A small price to pay. Uh, is she understanding any of this? Is she hearing any of this? No, but as a chronic explainer, he has to he has to say everything that's happening. Wake up, Luna! She's just standing there! Thanks, Thanks Joey. Joey. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we both paused it and restarted it so we can say the exact same thing. <laughs> anyway, Goku, save her. Is she too scared to duel? It's not that she's too scared to duel, Goku. She's fucking hypnotized. The man is cheating like no tomorrow. Huh? What's wrong? Wait, they do have the sibling telepathy. <laughs> Wait, is Leo also there? Why is Leo a fucking zombie? Why is none of the adults helping? <laughs> staff, one of our duelists has been catatonic for 20 minutes. Can we get a wellness check? Uh, <laughs> staff, an uh, audience member, it's also catatonic. Um, they actually happen to be the twin of the other catatonic duelist we've got. Anyone want to help the Dexter? It's all down to you, Dexter. You've got to save him. What, what, you got to do it, bro. you got to save him. Edo, the supreme magical force, attack Karibon and bring out Luna's Mark of the Dragon. Right, why would the Mark of the Dragon show with her being attacked? Like, she has to be the one doing cool plays for that mark to kind of activate, right? I think in general it's just like the kind of dual stress that you're in, but I think it's been, I think chat nailed it on the head here. He's also put her in a catatonic state for the past turn. She can't react to anything. Why is it that Luna's cards show up in there, but also the opponent who's never been there? How can Edo be there? Because plot. <laughs> Bro literally made it so he could just endlessly torture this curry bond. <laughs> I created a card. Oh, is it sentient? Yes, but it can only feel pain. Why did you do that? For the vine. Of course, with curry bond still equipped with my little spell, he isn't destroyed but survives. And next round, he'll be destroyed and survive again. And again until you give me what I need. Well, two things for you. One, another step closer to you. That was fucking creepy. Two, um, it won't, because you'll win the duel if you attack again. Think, Luna. Think. Think about the spirit world. Think, Think about, about what, what was, was revealed, revealed to you. All right, should we do a wellness check on Luna at this point? What? I don't like creepy man being like, check what has been revealed to you, Luna. What I like most about Luna is that she's very mature for her age. No, 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 no! Think, Think about, about the Crimson, crimson dragon. dragon. Think! Think! Stop telling me to think I want to! God, stop, you fucking creepy motherfucker, Jesus Christ. Dude, come on. Think! Think! I swear to God, if this man says think one more time, I'm gonna face plant him. Tell me about the Crimson Dragon! Oh my God, that was so aggressive! I'm really, no, but I'm scared. No, this world's supposed to be a safe place. You can't harm me here. She's learning to fight back. She's learning to fight back. She's doing it. Yeah, yeah, get it, Luna. Huh? <gasps> oh. Somebody didn't remember the effect that it comes back at the end of the turn. <laughs> wow, another Yu-Gi-Oh player who doesn't read. I'm so surprised. <laughs> I'm Edo the Magical Fool. It's your turn, Luna. And don't neglect all the progress we've made. Oh, progress! We have made none! No progress has been made with the help of this man! Yeah, all you've done is torture a kid in front of millions of people. You're going back in a prison cell at the end of this. That's what's happening. I draw. Remember, you lose 300 points due to the effect of immortal homeostasis. Perhaps this will jog your memory. Oh yeah, because the last like 1,000 odd damage you just did to her jogged her memory. So doing another 300, that'll do it. I summon my monster sunlight unicorn. And now I equip Horn of the Unicorn on my Sunlight Unicorn. Whoa, no, but these are mad plays. She equipped Horn of the Unicorn to the Unicorn? That would, I think by definition, make it not a unicorn anymore. Why, because it has two horns? Yeah. Where does the other horn go? It just goes on the main horn. <laughs> Why would you do that? 
<laughs> it's just armor for the main horn, apparently. So remember what I said about practicing safe dueling, folks. <laughs> this not this sunshine unicorn's got it. it. It knows what it's doing. Unlike me. How's she fighting back? Who's giving her strength? I didn't tell her to do that move. So what the fuck is going on? As a man, having a woman do something I didn't tell them to do makes me uncomfortable. He's just like, oh, he did tell her to duel. Is she meant to just be actually comatose and like not doing anything? Because like, I do think that is against the duel terms. I think the rules do not allow that. Look, if someone can point to the rule book where it says you can't hypnotize your opponent, I'll, I'll give marks against this, but I think the professor is fully within his rights to completely hornswoggle the opponent. I, I don't think you are allowed to just, like, hypnotize your opponent, but yeah, I'll check the rule books. I'll check the rule book for you. You know, Leo's always got to make it about himself somehow, doesn't he? Every time. This is Luna's trauma of being sent to the spirit world. Why are you going there? <laughs> you fucking summoned the thing, Luna! You don't get to scream about it summoning in when you fucking summoned it. Luna. Luna. <gasps> okay, maybe when a magical voice says your name, you can scream at that bit. You can scream at that thing, but not the unicorn. Who is it? Who's out there? Luna, you have finally returned to fulfill your promise. What promise? The promise to not keep getting hypnotized by strange men in front of millions of people. To protect the realm of the dual spirits. Protect the world from devastation. To unite all peoples within our nation. From the forces of evil. That's a heavy fucking thing to expect a child to do. It's okay, it wouldn't be the first time we act as a literal child to save the dual world. There once was a little kid called Yugimoto. <laughs> She's like five, you have put too much pressure on her. But I'm just a little kid. What can I do? No, oh, that's the say we got slapped with the to be continued. Oh, uh, what is it though? What is the thing that she can do? You can come with me. Fucking why'd you have to press the no, play button? No. No, why? <laughs> why did you have to press the play button? <laughs> Are you gonna help get me away from this creepy man? Yes, and I'm gonna take you to a creepy voice. What happens when a kidnapper saves you from another kidnapper? That's a great question. And that's curtains for this part. To be continued in the next episode, because honestly, this video ran a little longer than I expected for just one episode. And I'm a little creeped out by both this guy and ancient fairy dragon. Uh, what did we learn? That hypnotizing your opponent is totally cool and acceptable, according to Rex Goodwin. If you're waiting for my approval, well then... <sighs> Oh, I know you will, but at this point, I'm wondering what you won't allow, because it seems like anything goes at the Fortune Cup. We also learned that adults looking after Luna will likely bad talk her behind her back as soon as she leaves, and that you say is watching. And honestly, I wish you say Fudo would just, I don't know, watch me. Next episode, we learn all about Luna's promise to Ancient Fairy Dragon and watch her attempt to force Edo, the annoying card that won't go away, out of the spirit realm. It's gonna be less uncomfortable than this episode was, that is for certain. So subscribe to the channel so you don't miss how broken is episode 19 of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds and also to become an original Cardinal Sinner, which has very limited slots left because once we hit 10k, it's a new generation of Cardinal Sinners, baby. Also, please check out the new Patreon if you want unedited versions of the How Broken Is, exclusive voting powers for videos, early sneak peeks of upcoming events, and your own monthly exclusive duel room where you get to duel me off stream with the other patrons. You'll also be featured in these videos as a thank you. So check it out and sign up today to further support the channel. I would super genuinely really appreciate that. Do it and I'll give you a big dog champ lick. Yeah, I will. I'll give you the biggest dog champ lick I can. For now, though, I'm going to take a quick shower and cleanse myself of the creepiness that was episode 18, because seriously, it was cringe. The creepiest episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! 5 ds to date. Catch you guys next episode. Ready? Big dog chant licks. Here we go. Oh. Fulfill my mission. <laughs>